Hey folks, welcome back to the C10 build here on Old Project Dale. Today, I'm going to teach myself how to weld. So what we've got here is we've got a Hobart Handler 135 and I've been trying to teach myself with the help of some of you guys and some YouTube videos uh, how to manipulate the speed settings and heat settings on this particular model. Needless to say, I've been doing okay. Let's go take a look at some of the welds that I've done and you guys can let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Now if you follow me on Instagram, I've already posted some of those pictures, but basically what I was doing was I was taking some of the sheet metal that we're using to put the rocker panels and cab corners on Project Dale and some of the scraps I've just been putting them together so let's take a look. So right here is the first attempt where I was blowing through the metal and I got a little too hot and the speed of the wire might have been too fast I don't know I have no idea what I'm talking about but then I kinda did a second try and it looked a little bit better And then I tried again and it was all gummed up and same thing here, but eventually after practicing a little bit longer the welds started looking a little bit better to the point where I built up enough confidence to come over to the rocker panels on old Dale and Well start laying some beads Let's take a look at how that turned out there's one there where the gap looks like it's a little bit too wide. Well, of course it is. I'm a noob and I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm doing it. And then we come up top here and we started laying some beads down there. It started splattering and making a few holes. Then we came over here and things were going pretty good. Until I got up here in the corner and it started laying some really bad bubbly stuff. But as you can see, the grinder seemed to fix a little bit of that. And in my opinion, Bondo hides a world of sin. Anyways, so what this video tonight is going to be about is I'm just going to show you a little bit of my technique and how I've taught myself to do this. And then you guys can grade my performance in the comment section down below and let me know what you think. And yes, there's going to be a lot of more heat, more speed, less heat, less speed, more heat, less speed, and whatever the other option is. So. Let's go over, we've got a couple of big pieces of plate steel we're going to try welding together and uh, we'll go from there. Then we're going to show you what's left on the passenger side of Project Dale and then we can start work on the driver's side. Okay, so what we've got here is two pieces of plate steel and it looks like it's pretty thick stuff, maybe eighth inch. And I've got the surfaces kind of cleaned up here a bit and we're just going to kind of do a couple of different methods along here and uh, see if we can't make those welds look good. Here's ones that I did last night just on the flat and uh, this is an old piece of metal that Junior had when he was in school that he had done some practice welding uh, on it and just brought the plates home. So we're gonna weld this up and uh, see what we're gonna do. So on eighth inch steel, we're probably gonna keep the heat up on at least number two. We're gonna try that first. We've got our wire speed at 30 out of 100. We'll see how that works out first. And if we feel the need to adjust, we'll go from there. And as you can see, we've got our CFH up to about 13 or 14. Again, you guys can let me know in the comment section down below whether you think that's too much, too little, or what. I'm just going by what they said on YouTube, guys. It's gotta be true. So let's get the camera set up and uh, we'll do some welding. All right. Let's do this. So it would help if I was going down the line, which I'm clearly not. But you'll notice that it was doing an awful lot of spattering. So either the metal's dirty or what? I have no idea. I'm going to get some gloves on too. So now on this second pass, I think what we're going to do is we're going to turn the heat up to number three as opposed to number two and see if that makes a difference. It's 
So that one looks a little straighter at least. And the weld looks like it's penetrated because I was obviously in the seam. That's with the heat up a little bit now. I'm going to try it with the speed of the wire up just a little bit as well. And let's do take three. I don't know. That still looks like it's a little thick. And I don't know what that's telling me. So my guess is, is that too much wire or the wire is possibly too fast. So I'm liking the second one a little bit with the higher heat and the lower wire speed. So I did a few more beads here on this flat piece of steel and granted it ain't no stack of dimes and we're not welding the Titanic together so knowing that I've got the basics down pat. It's just a matter of playing with the settings on these uh, on this old welder. I think I feel confident enough to bubble gum the cab corner on the truck. So we're going to get that cut up tonight and uh, get it tacked into place and hopefully don't have to do too much grinding. So, so let's go grab that cab corner where I've already got it marked. We'll get it cut up and then see if we can't get her tacked into place. So what I've got here is I've got this little punch or a flange tool and what we're going to be doing is we are going to be making ourselves a little flange that goes along the edge of the panel here as well as along the back side here. And all it's going to do is, I don't know if you can see that, is put like a little, little bit of a lip right there so that when I put the cab corner up against it, it'll have a place that I can spot weld to it and it be recessed below the panel that's already existing. That way when we go to put it on, we can do minimal welding or grinding and minimal body work with the uh, body fill when the time comes. So I'm gonna show you how I use this. Tell me if I'm doing it right or wrong. I'm sure you'll tell me that I'm doing it wrong. I'm probably doing it wrong. That's as far as it's going to let me go because there's a part of the inner cap corner that's in there. But that's how we do it and you can see now there's a pretty distinct line along there and that's where our metal will sit on the new cap corner. Alright, so now we're going to get this thing cut on the lines that I've scribed out. Okay, so let's go test fit that and see how close we are. Well, it's not an exact fit, but then again, this is an aftermarket part, so it's looking pretty good back there but it's sticking out quite a ways over here. So I'm thinking what we're gonna have to do is trim off a little bit of that flange right there. I'll go do that and be right back. So I suppose this is probably a good a spot as any to talk about the pros and the cons of aftermarket parts. The pros, super thick metal. They look very similar to the way they're supposed to be. The cons are super thick metal is harder to work with as far as molding and making it bend in certain ways that you want it to. 
and they just don't fit quite right. Um, but then again, I'm not doing this the way that it was initially intended, but nevertheless, I think I'm going to have to go the same route with the cab corners as I did with the rocker panels, and that's cut out the exact shape and um, butt weld it into place. Because here's what I'm up against. Along the back side, it fits nice and tight. It's almost perfect. Over here, I've got quite a gap on the inside lip there. And even when I put the proper pressure on it to get it to weld, it's gonna be quite a jump from this surface to this surface when you start welding and grinding and then you're gonna have a great big hump in your body fill when you go to kind of smooth that over. That flange isn't quite working the way I had hoped, but if I could get it set in a little bit more then I could butt weld it, I would be more apt to have a seamless transition from the old to the new. So I think that's what I'm gonna to have to do is cut that out, scribe it, and uh, make that fit perfectly the way um, I did with the rocker panels over here because I'm just not satisfied with the way it's fitting so we're gonna keep grinding here so guys it is the next night and we do have the cab corner welded into place stop looking at me with this Santa hat on my head I just got done recording the promo video for the car guy and six fan show Christmas special which is coming up on Thursday at 8 o'clock Eastern Time on my channel. You don't want to miss it. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're sharing all kinds of uh, reminiscent things from the past. So make sure you tune in 8 o'clock, my channel, Car Guy and Six Fan Show with Grant Tommy, who is Straight Six Fan. Uh, hopefully, you guys can join us there. So, what we're doing right now is last night I finished up by getting the cab corner welded into place. I started grinding. And well, that grinding wheel just isn't doing the trick. So tonight I opted to run out and purchase a flap wheel or a flap disc or whatever you want to call it. And we're hoping that it works a lot quicker than the grinder. And that's going to finish up the mess I made with the welding. I am embarrassed to show you, but let's take a look. So as you can see right there, we've got some little pieces of welding wire and some bubble gum kind of going up the side there. Over here, we got it grinded down pretty good. And then we come across to this side here, and well, you can see my bubble gum. So the plan to finish up this video is to just grind down the rest of this bad welding, make it look like I actually did something good, and then we'll finish out this video. Well, I tell you what guys, that flapper disc makes a heck of a lot quicker work of a grinding wheel. And the more you do these type of jobs, I'm finding, the more you find the right tools and the easier way to do it. But we got that smoothed down really good on all four sides here. Well, I say four, but we got one, two, three, and number four. So now that we've got the outside looked after, it's time to concentrate on those inner pieces that we've got to cut to fit up in there. I might even save that for when I get this truck back to the shop and get it up on the hoist. One of the things that we've got to deal with is this fuel tank. It's right in there where we need to be working, so I may have to drop the fuel tank to get those inner pieces uh, welded in. So that is it, guys, for the day of the truck episode. We're going to be uh, working away at this for a little while longer tonight. Uh, just cleaning up some things and uh, then we're going to get started on the driver's side cutting and getting things put together. I'm not sure if I'll record all that. I might maybe highlight a few extra things uh, but as it sits right now it's going to be the exact same process over here. It just depends on how much rot we find. Uh, will depend on how much work we have to do. So I'm glad that you guys are sticking with it and I know that you're liking these videos because you're giving the thumbs up down below and I'm getting new subscribers every day. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, I hope you consider it. All you got to do is hit that little red button down in the bottom corner and hit the bell notification. That way when I do post a new video, you guys are getting notified right away and you can come watch it. Old Car Auto Guy merchandise is for sale. I'm going to put those pictures up on the screen right now. The most recent one is the Dale the Truck Tee and then we have the OG Old Car Auto Guy. 
I've also got the focus on the windshield tees as well as Demise of Bubbles. Now, at the end of the year, the Demise of Bubbles t-shirt will be going away. So if you want yours now, now's the time to order. Uh, you might still be able to order it now and get them for Christmas. Uh, spread shirt is generally pretty quick that way. So, and don't forget about the Car Guy and Six Fan Christmas special coming up on Thursday. Uh, we're going to have a pretty good group of guys there. And it's going to be, uh, we're going to be talking about some really cool things. And you guys aren't going to want to miss it. And uh, we'll be wishing you guys a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. So thanks for everything. Stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. Guys, I love you. God bless. We'll see you in the next Dale the Truck video.